Welcome to Best Recaps. Today we will talk about of an Australian science fiction film. The movie is set in a future where the world has been severely damaged by climate change, with all plant life extinct and oxygen levels greatly decreased. The story of the movie revolves around the consequences of relying on artificial oxygen, which ultimately leads to a fatal illness known as the sickness. The only city that has managed to survive is in Australia, and it is sustained by a corporation called Chronicorp that produces synthetic oxygen. As time runs out for humanity, the protagonist Ethan White struggles to keep his wife Sand alive while working as a mechanic for the Chronicorp Corporation, which is racing against time to find a cure for the sickness and a way to save the world. One day Ethan is summoned to the lab by Regina Jackson, the CTO of Particle Research, who reveals that Ethan is the key to saving humanity, and that his father had been working on this project for 20 years. In front of them stood a machine known as the Chronicle, a time machine. In the first ever test of the machine, they sent radio waves into it to see what was on the other side. They discovered that 407 years later, in 2474, Earth would have an abundance of vegetation providing enough oxygen to sustain human life. The people became convinced that if humanity still existed in several hundred years, they must have solved all the problems of their current reality. However, the scientists were puzzled by a strange occurrence. The waves they sent had returned to them, but in a modified form. When they decoded the message, they found out that someone from the future had sent them a message that read, Send Ethan White. Regina and her team proposed that Ethan travel to the future to retrieve a cure for the sickness that threatens humanity, but Ethan is skeptical and hesitant. He is not willing to leave his ill wife behind and declines to take part in the plan. Later at a diner, his friend Jude tries to convince him to help save humanity, but Ethan is dismissive, saying he doesn't want to be like his father who abandoned him and his mother 20 years ago. He resents his father for not being there for him and his mother, who was killed when he was young. He was raised by Jude, who is like a brother to him, but he also blames his father for leaving his mother behind to complete the project and doesn't want to repeat that by leaving his own wife. Despite his initial reluctance, Ethan ultimately agrees to help save humanity and find a cure for the sickness after his friend Jude reminds him that it is the only way to save his wife. He reflects on a memory from his childhood when his father gave him a mysterious box as a gift, which contained a device that attaches to his wrist and makes him bleed. He has never known the purpose of this device until now. The next day, Ethan leaves a note for Zan then heads back to Regina's office, where he makes a deal with Regina that if he finds a cure, it must be given to Zan first. Regina takes him back to the lab, where he is fitted with a suit and informed of the mission. But he soon realizes that they have no idea what he will encounter or who he will meet when he travels to the future. After being fitted with the suit, Ethan is given an AI device named Archie, which constantly monitors his vital signs and helps him navigate his location. He is then launched into the machine, hurtling through time at high speed. When he emerges, he finds himself in an unknown jungle and his suit is on fire. He quickly removes it, taking in the stunning beauty of the nature around him. He realizes that the world has changed dramatically, with trees and natural oxygen thriving. He follows Archie's guidance and comes across a bunker door, but is startled to find a skeleton with a bullet hole in its skull lying in front of it. Ethan is horrified to find that the skeleton in front of the bunker door bears his own name. He discovers the skeleton's Archie device and listens to the final recording, in which a man says this is the only way, before shooting Ethan. The device's power then goes off, leaving Ethan to believe that this is his fate. He examines the skeleton's wrist device, which is identical to his own but with the green light instead of the red one he has had his entire life. That night, he eats wild berries, but they are poisonous and he falls unconscious. When he wakes up, he is surprised to find his friend Jude there, sent by the lab to the future to save him after they saw his vital signs dropping due to the poison. Eventually, Ethan and Jude discover that his skeleton remains in the same place, indicating that his fate has not been altered. They use Archie to find another door, which scans Ethan's eye and grants them access. Inside, they find a monitor that requests a DNA sample, and when Ethan provides it, his wrist device activates and he bleeds. After the blood test, the device turns green, and the lights in the room turn on revealing that they are in the Chronicorp lab, 407 years in the future. The time machine is also in front of them. Although Jude is excited by the possibility of returning to the past, Ethan is less enthused, believing that they haven't changed anything and he will still end up dead like the previous version of himself. Ethan investigates the system logs and discovers a holographic recording made by his father, who explains that the time machine was initially designed to gather oxygen data from the future and send it back to the past. However, when his father first activated the machine, he received a message asking him to send his son to the future, and despite his reluctance, he did so and set up a DNA verification for Ethan. 
soon. Ethan and Jude realize that the time machine cannot take them back because its battery is almost depleted after 407 years, and to make matters worse, activating the lab has caused a malfunction in its nuclear power core, leading to a nuclear explosion in just four hours. Ethan and Jude are in a race against time to fix the time machine and travel back before the explosion. They discover a ruined city covered in green plants but devoid of human life, indicating that the Earth is recovering after human extinction. They find human skeletons scattered throughout the area. Ethan goes to his wife's house only to find her bones, causing him to despair. Jude tries to convince him to go back to the past, as there seems to be no cure for the sickness in the future world. But Ethan becomes suspicious and plays the recording on the Archie again, recognizing Jude's voice as the one who shot him. Jude denies it and raises his gun at Ethan. In the end, Ethan decides to complete the mission first, and together they manage to repair the power core and return to the lab. With the Chronicle system repaired, they should be able to return to the past, they just need to wait 37 minutes for the portal launch. But Ethan discovers that his body remains behind the same door, indicating that they haven't made any changes to the future. To uncover the truth, Ethan takes the battery from his current Archie and inserts it into the rusty one. He gains access to another video in which his future self is killed by Jude. Jude then confesses that there is no hope of changing the future and he is trying to protect Ethan. Ethan locks his brother up in a room and plays back his father's holographic log from the day he died and discovers a conversation between Regina Jackson and his father. It is revealed that Ethan's father had intended to use the time machine to save all humanity by finding a cure, while the CTO had only intended to use it to escape the dying world with a select few. Regardless of the plan chosen, someone had to travel to the future to activate the machine, and in order to safely send living matter through time, it required an operational link from both sides. In order to thwart the CTO's plan, Ethan's father locked the time machine and set Ethan's DNA as the verification key. Enraged by this, the CTO killed him immediately, and then ordered Jude to kill Ethan's mother and serve as his guardian, so that one day they could use Ethan's wristband to access the future. Ethan is shocked to learn that the man he thought of as his brother had killed his mother and was planning to kill him as well. He also realizes that he had misunderstood his father, who had not deliberately abandoned his family. Ethan attempts to shut off the time machine, but Jude intervenes and reveals that he has been sent by the CTO to ensure that Ethan is sent back in time to fix a power failure. However, Jude has grown emotionally attached to Ethan over the years and upon seeing the distress his actions have caused, is overcome with guilt and kills himself instead of Ethan. This prompts Ethan to become determined to fulfill his father's dying wish of finding a cure to save humanity, and, upon examining a message his father left, realizes that he must send himself back in time with the message, Send Ethan White. As the time machine in the year 2067 activates, the CTO and her chosen few await eagerly. However, their excitement quickly turns to shock as the machine sends back a variety of extinct plants, along with evidence of the murder of Ethan's father. Ethan, who had destroyed the machine, foils the CTO's plans and she is arrested for the murder. The return plants are used to rejuvenate the planet and Ethan's wife receives a flower sent by him, understanding his decision. Though he is left alone in the future, Ethan forgives Jude and buries him. As he looks around, a butterfly catches his attention and leads him back to the same entrance he had arrived at. He is surprised finding that the corpse of his future self is no longer there. He finds that the world outside is now a bustling technologically advanced city filled with greenery and clean energy sources. He encourages others to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications and like the video to support the channel.